let's talk about being adults. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we are drinking apple cider vinegar diluted with water and uh, like a tablespoon of honey because your girl like her honey. Do you guys know I don't put sugar in my coffees? I put honey. I don't know if that's weird or not. I don't think it is, but people have told me it's weird, but I don't think it is. I, I think honey is is really good in coffee and I really, really recommend it. With that said, I can't believe my voice is still sleepy because it is 11, 17 a.m. here on a Tuesday and this morning at 9 a.m., we, I, uh, we have a patron who's a yoga instructor and I bought one of her group lessons and then we did it on my discord this morning. So at 9am, my discord was awake and doing yoga with us. Amazing. That was my very first yoga lesson. It was so much fun. I can't believe my voice hasn't caught up to it. I guess I've just, I haven't been talking this morning, I guess much, but my voice sounds so asleep, but I have not been asleep. I have literally done yoga this morning at 9am. And if you know anything about me, 9am is extremely early for Brittany. I, if, if I didn't have to be awake at normal people hours, I would 100% be awake during the night filming, going live, doing my stuff, but the world apparently wants to sleep between those hours, so... So in today's uh, episode, I guess actually, I guess that kind of works perfectly with what I want to talk about, which is adulting. What does it mean to adult? When you're an adult, does it mean that you keep a schedule, stay in shape, eat healthy, and own a house? Like right now, what is your idea of an adult? Put it in the comment sections down below. Mm. And if you're listening on Spotify, thank you very much for that. Also, I am well aware that apparently I do not promote my social media stuff enough. So my editor, Len, who we love on this channel, L-E-N-N, double N, Len, he told me that I need to remind you guys that he's been working his butt off making clips for our secondary channel. That's my clips channel where I just clip the podcast in sections, which I don't do anymore. Len does. But it's fucking fantastic. If you guys want to check it out, I really recommend you do. Please leave a like for Len. We really appreciate his effort here on this channel. So with that said, what does adulting look like? Maybe it looks like being able to hire an editor, which I wish I could afford full time. You know, that's kind of my goal is I want to be adult enough to afford to pay Len full time. So Remember, if you want Len to be my full-time editor, we have to do the likes, we have to do the comments, we have to do the whole support thing. If you want, join us on Discord through Patreon. That totally helps support the channel and Len's salary. But in this conversation, because we come from different bubbles, different cultural backgrounds, different ideologies, our definition of adult will just be different. And if it's different, well, what does that mean for fulfillment and then we have to go back to what does it mean to have purpose and what does it mean to have a core now in the first like 50 episodes of my podcast I mentioned the core self a lot and everyone always asks me about the core self but that's work I normally do on my one-on-one -on -one calls with people so I can ask you questions I actually have a core exercise that I do with most people if I haven't done it with you yet and we've been doing calls just request it but it's like a little core exercise. Um, I have people imagine themselves in scenarios. We talk through them. You know, what would you do next kind of scenarios? And it really helps solidify. This is a meditation technique that I don't want to say I made up. I don't want to say that I'm that important or smart, but I used on myself. So basically where I am now in terms of adulting is recognizing that I am not college educated, college educated nor do I have the certifications in the normal bubbles to be acceptable as an adult, but I have managed to hopefully brand myself as somebody who's trying to tell you like if you don't have these things you can still find answers and I do believe that this is very hot for those who are not looking I keep switching my mug from hand to hand mm. because it is so hot but I want to drink it while it's hot but the mug is kind of slightly too warm but at the same time not because you know welder hands um but you know it, it's toasty so if you guys keep watching this visual you're welcome so when I think of adulting and I think about the core self and I think about what I want and my purpose and I try to get it, I have to also remember and give myself time to be honest with how long I've been attempting to adult. I think I've been attempting to adult my whole life, like since I was an adolescent child, like really, really young. But I don't think that I had the tools, no, the maturity level or the brain development to really do it. And so what I was doing was playing house or playing adult. You know, when you're growing up, like I used to like have Ikea catalog catalogs and I would like dream of my first apartment and my first apartment not ended up not being my first apartment. I ended up be, having roommates and like a studio apartment and then I went from like another friend's house to that friend's house and then I paid rent in like other places and then I slept on people's couches and then I was kind of a mess and depressed and this whole time I was like, I'm adulting, I'm adulting. I have jobs. I don't have jobs. I'm, I have friends. I don't have friends. I'm working through things. I'm not working through things. Like I just thought this like back and forth crazy trauma was adulting to some extent while recognizing that I wasn't really adulting because I didn't have the sort of security of the adult world or what the adult world promises. 
Then I kept growing up and I saw other people who had adult parents who weren't acting very adult. And that was confusing to me because I was like, how are you 50 and still a hot mess? Because I look at my parents as a trajectory and I look at them and I can see that they were definitely in their 30s when they were in their 30s. They definitely went dirt bike riding and took us to Mexico as kids and ran around dunes and had so much fun and just like camped all the time. And, you know, we just had so much fun growing up. And then I noticed that they were in their 40s and 50s. And then all of a sudden my parents were in their 60s. And I'm looking at my parents now and still there's such an adolescent energy to them. And yet they are completely adult adults. They have, you know, no debt. They have a business. Um, they have employees. They have 10 raised grown adult children. Um, they have like grandkids. They have this whole life they built. They, they're, they're a rock for us. Like if I have to go home, that means going home to my mom. If I say, um, like if I hit my parents up, and I asked them for help, they would help me within their means. You know, my parents aren't like, um, you know, they struggled for 10 years or 10 years. They struggled with 10 kids most of their life. So they, they didn't, and they were immigrants and they weren't college educated. So they didn't have like, I didn't have a, a upper class, middle, middle class living. I had like a normal low to middle class living. You know what I mean? Uh, if my parents could afford it, maybe we got a new Nintendo set. If um, when it was time, I think I was 12 when I got cable for the first time and I got to watch Toonami and Sailor Moon and Gundam Wing and that was so cool. And it still all felt like adulting though because my parents ultimately like made decisions for us. When I looked at my parents and I tried to decide if they were adults, I didn't ask myself how old they were. I asked myself what they were responsible for, who they were responsible for. And I'm at this stage in my life where in reflection or in contrast to my, my parents' life, I'm not an adult really because I don't really care for anybody. Like I don't, no one financially relies on me. Nobody emotionally relies on me. I'm not married. I don't have kids. And that's fine. In so many ways, it's peak living. But what I noticed was um, I, I ended up on a side of TikTok that was like single entrepreneurial women who live like crazy single lives. And it was really cool. It was great. They were partying with their girlfriends, hanging out, babysitting kids, being cool aunties, just enjoying their life. And there was something really great about it. But for some reason, I really struggle with seeing them as adults. And I'm realizing that for myself that, I mean, I've always wanted to be a mom, period, the end, since I was like literally like prepubescent. I was ready to be a mom. I was like nine years old. I was like, I'm ready to be a mom. I want to be a mom so bad. I know I do. I'm a mom basically on this internet, right? Mama Simon for a reason. Like I just, it, it's my calling. It's my core, that desire to be a mother, that desire to mother. Um, and I, like I said, I don't actually have to have my own kids, but I need to be needed in that particular way to feel like an adult. So I'm trying to form my life in a way in which I can get that thing to help me consistently feel good about existing because I do like my existing. I like being single in my 30s, going where I want, flying where I want, seeing who I want or not, staying in my house, never leaving this house, doing like streams, doing podcasts. I like all of these options, but they're very different kinds of options. Being responsible for just yourself is nice and powerful and independent. It feels so fucking good, dude, but it also feels sort of meaningless to me. But not enough for me to feel sad or depressed over it. Just enough for me to go, oh, well, okay, good. I'm glad I know I want more. I'm glad I have Indiana that relies on me as a cat. That makes me feel really needed. I'm glad I live with my brothers. I like that they're here. Yesterday, um, yesterday we did a very adult adolescent thing. And my youngest brother asked me if I wanted to go throw tomahawks at a tree. And I was like, yes. And so we put on our Kakashi, you know, walk and we or run and we ran our asses to the forest, which was so fun. And we threw sharp things at trees. And it was really great. It was like a nice little bonding experience. We both cut our hands open. So, you know, we're men. And, um, you know, I finally learned to hit a tree a couple times. And that was really good. My aim is definitely not great. My hand-eye coordination, zero. But I'm working on it. And I sat there as I'm throwing these knives and we're out in the wilderness and we're just having fun. And I kept thinking to myself, is this what adults do or is this what kids do? And I came to the conclusion it's childlike because it's fun and sort of like meaningless. But in some ways, it's also very adult because we're kind of hoping it can be for me at least maybe an exercise routine, um, a practice in self-defense, uh, a means of focus, meditation. Like I think the difference... I have to put my glass down for this so I can use my hands. I feel like the difference between children and adults is that children play games for pure amusement and entertainment and adults learn to turn their games into something that moves them forward, hopefully. 
hopefully, I think the skill you learn as you age is how to turn the things you love into things that can teach you things. And even as children, like even now my sister-in-law, she'll have me watch the kids once a week and one of the five-year-olds, he's going to be older ne- next. He's, But he's, you know, he's got a birthday coming up. But anyways, he, he as he ages, because he's so smart, he loves video games and loves them more and more every day. But he only plays them once a week when he's at Auntie Brittany's house. That's kind of like the rule. Unless he plays with his dad, you know, but he plays with me. And he's so... He's already picking up sort of like negative habits, which is interesting. So positives of video games for him, which I've made as a case to my sister-in-law who does not like video games. He'll learn how to read faster because he is reading, but he's reading slowly and video games will encourage him to read more. He loves Zelda. Lots of reading. Mario Odyssey. Lots of reading. Okay. Um, Second, it's a great bonding experience. It's one of my favorite pastimes with my siblings. I love playing video games with them. Um, My nephew is very competitive, but he's a sore loser. So one of the things we're already seeing is that he's a sore loser because he's so smart. He thinks he should be good at video games. So like the soccer lesson I gave him or the kickball lesson I gave him like a year ago, same thing with video games. Video games, you're not naturally good at. Some people maybe you are not to some extent. He's very good though. And I told him, no biggie. You just have to learn to play through. Funny enough, younger brother, that's my brother, his uncle, told him he can't rage quit which is funny because he rage quits I was like ah you can't tell him he can't rage quit when you know you rage quit but there's an interesting thing that happens between a child learning they shouldn't rage quit and an adult knowing they can rage quit because it doesn't matter right like a child does have to learn that they cannot rage quit that they have to learn to be a good loser to get better if they don't want to lose and to be a winner if they want to be one right When you're an adult, though, if you learn that lesson good enough as a child, you can be a rage quitter as an adult that isn't toxic. So when my younger brother rage quits on me, let's say I once in a blue moon get to actually beat him at something, he might rage quit and we laugh and I throw a pillow at him and it's like a big joke and I run around and I go, I made him rage quit. It's like funny. If he was a toxic rage quitter, he'd like call us real names that meant something. He'd be actually mad and probably not play with us. He'd get grumpy. There would be a a, a specific thing that happens in his body language that would make us go oh see now you're not having fun now you ruined it now you're acting like a child throwing a tantrum a child throws his tantrum because they don't know how to communicate their emotions so they get upset an adult knows how to communicate their emotions without making it everyone else's problem which begs the question are all these whiny bitches on the internet who complain 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 are they adulting if all they do is complain I've been really thinking about efficient complaining Um, obviously I'm a girl, so like, you know, the gossip be natural to me. Not that that stereotype isn't misogynistic to some extent, but it is actually really true too. Women love people and people make us want to gossip or at least talk about you. Damn. I talk about my discord all the time to my siblings or my siblings to my discord or like people, we just like to talk, you know, you know, when your bestie comes to you and they're like, do not tell anyone this. I'm like, do you mean anyone period? Or do you mean don't tell anyone, but I can tell my sister. And she's like, don't tell anyone, period. But I know you're going to tell your sister, so that's fine. (laughs) Do you get what I'm saying? Or maybe they'll say, don't tell anyone, period, and I won't. But it's the idea that, like, we all have our besties we go to. My mom tells everyone, you tell me anything, I'm going to tell my husband. My dad goes, you tell me anything, I'm going to tell. Oops. Oh, 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 oh. Edit out name, edit out name, edit out name. Man, I just slipped and said my mom's name on the podcast. That's so funny. I just, I was thinking of my dad so clearly. I said his voice, I had his voice in my head. I just like said it. Anyways, that's so funny. Okay, we'll edit that out. The point is, (laughs) is that I just, I know, like when I look at adults, I just know when I see them, I'm like, that's a real adult. And I know when I see other adults, I'm like, nope. And I feel right in the middle. So there's like kids, like when I was in my early 20s, like guys, very specific 20s was for Brittany, for me might be different for you. For me, my 20s was an extremely hot mess, an extension of my high school years. The fulfillment of my high school dreams happened in my 20s. Now in my 30s, now that I have money and stability and a good job and all these things, hello, thank you for that. You know, I am now in this middle space where I'm like, oh shit, Brittany, you have like adult money. So now you need to make adult decisions and and choose adult responsibilities, saving your money, being good about spending, buying a house, raising your child, maybe getting married doesn't matter and that's crazy to me how real it is now it wasn't real in my 20s even when I was dating and I thought I was going to get married or we were talking about getting houses or buying or saving for property it wasn't truly real until now because to be honest even though I'm not making I'm making like um right now I am making uh, about 20 grand more 
at the peak height of when I was making like nanny money. You know what I mean? Um, as of right now, but I'm going to, I'm going to excel. Like, that's what I mean. My cre- it's already, it's boop. So at this point, I'm just going to make more and more money most likely. Uh, because hopefully there, hopefully I, I am now at the adult age to make that money. And I, I mean this, this way, the job I want to do is, is to be sort of a, a champion of sort of wellness, getting better, being introspective philosophy, which puts me in an automatic leadership role, which as much as I don't personally need that or want that, it also just puts us there. So no matter who you are, if you're in a position of commenting on people, people automatically put you in sort of a, a leadership role if you command the energy. And it's obvious that I command a particular type of energy. Mama Simon, Auntie Brittany, it's it's a toppy energy, but it's also a, a hopefully compassionate energy, a hopefully a warm energy that I didn't know how to facilitate in my 20s, but I was trying. In my 20s, it was clear I was trying to help people. I used to do live calls. I used to give advice to people. I was trying so hard, but it was only with the tools I had at the time, which though good, especially for people who are kind of a mess and coming 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 21, 22, now, now my age demographic is aging and we're all growing together and I'm gaining like a larger audience that's aging with me. So it's now 30s and 40s and our struggles are just not the same. Our struggles are totally different and our 30s and 40s, like I'm having conversations with my friends all about buying houses, having kids, uh, establishing a retirement. I mean, really things that in my 20s I thought people were doing, but it was not the same. Even the people I knew in my 20s, <clears throat> who had like purchased homes or been married or had kids or either divorced, not in their homes, renting. Like it didn't quite work the way we thought it was going to work, at least in certain bubbles. Obviously in my conservative bubbles, people actually did fairly well. Ironically enough, I find that in terms of like the American dream, kids, family, picket fence, all that stuff, my conservative friends obviously did that a lot better and smoother and they're all pretty fine. And that makes sense. They're traditional. They're mostly religious. They come from small bubbles. It makes sense that they would be able to make that dream happen faster. Ironically enough, the left or liberal side of my friendship group, some have done that. Most haven't. Um, And I find that sort of funny. And a lot of them are also huge complainers about how the world is way more than my conservative friends. My conservative friends just kind of see the world as like, yeah, it is what it is. Hustle, make more money and make your family and do what you have to. And they're really good about it. My leftist friends complain a lot, make a lot of money, but for some reason have a much harder time just like living their lives. Now, this isn't everybody. Of course, there are obviously people I know in my life who are on the left or liberal who are doing fine. They're still sort of though in an identity crisis, which I think is interesting. Like a lot of them are still still fighting like Tumblr battles, which is why hopefully this channel as now that I've established myself as this like person who's a little different than she was in her 20s. Hopefully now I can start talking to you guys and like a sort of like, hey, are we going to start admitting that we're kind of big kids? Because I'm kind of a big kid still. And I want to say that without or or, I want to say that while acknowledging past Brittany and her growth, because if I just say I'm the same that I was in my 20s when that's not true, it's also not giving Brittany, Brittany, what? It's not giving Brittany, my past self, the credit she deserves, which is that she's definitely grown and gotten better, right? So moving forward in this state of being, I also have to admit out loud that I'm still like this big kid that's trying to balance it. I still, even the other day, my sister says to me, you know, Brittany, a real adult wouldn't have Dragon Ball Z mugs in their cabinets. And I get what she means. When I meet couples who are in their 40s and they still have like Star Wars all over their apartment, I'm like, oh yeah, you're like big kids. You like have adult money, but you're big kids. And it's weird because I don't, my room is like a big kid room. Like genuinely, I look at my room and I love being in here. But it's not how I'd have my room if I was in a relationship or when I buy my house. Like when I buy my house, I just know that that's going to feel way too grown up for me and I'm going to have to grow up my house. Now, that is my version of what aging looks like. Like my mom's house, I love how my mom decorates her house. It's clean. It's like pretty. It's livable, but you don't feel too stuffy in it. Like you feel like you can like wear your shoes in the house. Sorry, Asian communities. But like I feel like you can wear your shoes in the house. It's really comfortable. But it's clean and there's like very selective decorations. Like I'm very eclectic. I like lots of things. But I also feel very like the the desire Brittany has to have lots of things in her house is her adolescent brain. My adult brain wants a very minimalist house or more or less a very plant organic nature home, which actually costs a lot of money to maintain. 
So that's the irony of sort of aging is like that's why I think rich people are minimalists and poor people tend to be like hoardy. Like even when I was like really poor, I go to the dollar store and I would just buy everything. There's this TikTok that says um, something something like this. Like they make a joke out of this comment about like minimalism and how I'm too poor to be a minimalist. So I have to hoard everything I have in case I might never have it again. I lived that way for most of my life, which I think might just be like a poorish kid habit. But then I see my friends with money-ish growing up, like people with like kind of like one child and like $200,000 income, which is kind of like for me, that's like a lot of money for one kid to have that much income. So I look at their life and like their parents have like hoarding tendencies, but with nicer stuff. And I just think that's interesting. I don't know what that's from, but then they came from a background that maybe didn't have a lot of money. So maybe that's it. So I'm just trying to figure out these patterns within my life and then share them with you. And then we'll talk back and forth and hopefully find solutions. But I know this is a thing that people go through. You go through these stages in life where you have to make a decision like how grown up am I going to be when? I know I'm not mature enough to be Uncle Iroh because Uncle Iroh is old. I talked to this great patron the other day in our call and we said that our goals were to be like Toph when she's a grandma and her character was from some other show um, and it was an old lady. And I said, do you know why we can't be the old ladies yet in the story? Because we're not old. We are not old, but we're the younger versions of these old and we know our tropes and we know where we're going, right? We're going like, I'm, I know when I'm an old lady, I will be a tough, comforting, fun, kind of witchy forest grandma who will have a really nice house, like, you know, and maybe some farm oriented like energy. But the point is, is that I already know I'm heading there. I'm already heading towards Toph in the swamp where people come to see me. I don't go to see them because girl, I ain't going to leave my beautiful like paradise when I make it, you know. So it's kind of one of those things where I know that, but I need to age into it to earn the right to claim it. So I can't be a grandma Brittany yet. I have to be Auntie Simon or Mama Simon, which is a very young but mature but also adolescent responsibility. Auntie Simon is like the good woman with the guns who's going to come in and rescue you. And then Mama Simon is like the woman who's going to be like, hey, I need to be your mother, comfort you. And yeah, maybe even when I'm, I'm Mama Simon, I might draw a sword and slay a bad guy because of the motherliness versus Auntie Brittany would slay you because you a bitch. You know, different energies have to be earned. I couldn't have been – um. I think truly this person in front of you, like I never did one-on-one -on -one calls before really. I never paid attention to how my live shows were being conveyed to people. I didn't change my branding to reflect a more mature side of me. I reflected like a really adolescent side of me for very long. I'm making these small changes. I got bedding that represents sort of like an older version of me. I purposely, you know, the art I'm buying now is specifically from literal artists who have hand painted things. So I can say I'm collecting art instead of sort of buying ideas of art. I made this video years and years and years ago, um, way back when that I basically said something to the, to the effect of like, instead of buying the art that represents the life you want, m make your life the art, the living art that you want to live. And so I have this like thing where I, I do that now, but it took a really long time and it takes money. So, okay, sorry, going back to the irony of money and minimalism. My mother, she owns like five acres. My parents own this beautiful home. It's an old 1970s home, very small. I think like 1,500 square feet, three bedroom, two bath. You walk into the front door and you can see the end of the house. Like it's a really tiny house, like just a little boop, just like a little rectangle. Very cute one-story ranch style home. The acreage is what they, – they transform the home to look very beautiful and modern – but the outside of the home is really where a lot of the money went into. Putting up a fence, my brothers and my dad did that all by themselves around five acres because that would normally cost, I mean, 20, 30, 40, 50. Like it's very expensive to put in a nice fence and that large of an acreage. Um, so they did it themselves. My, we had wells and we have gardens. We have like um, a retaining wall because the, the house is on a hill. So it slides. These are things that cost thousands of thousands of dollars. My parents alone to um, – cut the trees on their like their acres like 10 grand like being an adult and owning a home and taking care of your property so it's nice is very it's it takes so much money and that's great and that's wonderful because I mean some small business who owns this tree cutting business is making money to feed their families and it means that every time we hire a tile guy he's feeding his family and my parents have a very they're very good at picking companies that are family owned because they own a family owned business. So they always try to go for the companies that are like mom and pop shops as much as possible. I think because they, of course, have their own business. So again, we try to give back to our communities. <clears throat> 
like my parents always said, it's good to make money so you can give it to other families by hiring them. Not just giving your money away. To them, that seems like a waste. To them, to facilitate the most healthy cycle of existence is to pay people for their labor and to pay them fairly. My parents are really fair with how much they pay people. They're actually, more than generous many, many times over. So like the point is, is that they really do have a sense of like value and conviction and justice when they are adulting in a way that I really like and I'm trying to emulate and I'm trying to remember you know when people complain you know they'll throw fits they'll throw soup in people's faces they'll go to restaurants you remember that crazy story about that woman I know she was upset the Tupperware melted and so she threw the hot or the cold soup into the woman's face like I couldn't ever imagine my parents doing that it's just so childish. It is so immature. I don't even give a fuck, bro. So somebody tried to kill you. Why are you throwing a tantrum versus panicking? Like, and they didn't even try to kill you, bitch. They work at a, at a fast food restaurant and the soup was hot. And I've worked in kitchens before. I've worked for delis. The soup is regulated by the temperature usually of the technology. So you are supposed to temp it. You're supposed to double check it at certain places but that's only if the protocol is in there otherwise the worker who's making seven dollars an hour is just thinking the soup should be fine why would they think the soup would be dangerous do you know what I'm saying so for some reason I feel like real adults my parents can do that they can like problem solve that very quickly so they know how upset to be versus like this woman went home got upset drove all the way back like had an let's say an hour to think about it and couldn't come to a better conclusion than let's throw soup in a, another woman's face. Not adulting. Not adulting. Do you know what I'm saying? What do you guys think so far? Is this ringing true for, for anyone else? I'm just, I want to get to the point in my life where I'm, I want to earn the right to get to the point in my life where I get to be an adult adult, like my parents. And that just means I have to make so many I just have to make decisions that don't allow me to engage with my adolescent desires as frequently as I have been, including sleeping in and staying up late, which I, I do love to do. I, my alarm goes off every day at 7 a.m., but I don't really get out of bed until 8.30, 9, depending if I have a call. I take calls from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So my life is like re revolves around my call schedule. But I purposely, if possible, um, only take like five or six or maybe 10 morning calls a month. And that's fine for me. But if it was like every day, 9 a.m. appointments, that would just that would be a new Britney. Like in order to be somebody that always has a 9 a.m. call, um, which is predicated on people's like schedules, obviously, but not very many people want morning calls either. But let's say I had p enough people now calling me who always wanted a 9 a.m. call. That would be a different version of myself that doesn't even exist at this moment because this Brittany right now doesn't usually wake up on time to have a 9 a.m. call. We did yoga at 9 a.m. this morning, right? Shocked me. I was like, it made me feel really good. Honestly, it was such a good yoga lesson. And it was such a good first introduction for me. And I kept thinking to myself, maybe I could be a Brittany that wakes up every morning at 9 a.m. for yoga. Could I do that? Could I be a Brittany that does yoga at 9 a.m. every day? Is that a person I can be? And that's how I try to decide, like, what version of my adult self do I want to be by the time I reach 40? You know, because this person right now, she's chilling. She likes her life. I'm not saying she's doing anything wrong. I think being young and having Dragon Ball Z mugs and loving anime and, like, having an adolescent side is fine. But it can't be a whole – it can't take up most of my very much – um, it can't take up too much of my adulting time because my life just requires so much more adulting um, energy from me currently. And so I have to just kind of own that. And that's, uh, dude, I'm like so ready though. I'm like so ready. I'm, I really want a kid. I really want a house. And I know I'm going to get it in the next like three years. All those things will happen. I think by the estimate right now, I mean, there's a good chance I could even be in my own house this time next year. That's the goal. I'm hoping this is the last time I sign a lease in this, this townhouse. But if that happens... I mean, I'm going to be like an adult with a house, house debt, y'all, house debt. You feel me? House debt and a mortgage. And that is a commitment. And I want to be ready for that commitment. And so that means that I have to be really smart about how I spend the next like six months. So I've already like scheduled out things. I've already told myself, okay, Brittany, you're going to take like two trips, maybe three, but you're going to do them all in the same span of time. So they're done in like a month total or two months or something. And you don't have to worry about them. We're going to buy a house in the fall. 
do all these things. Well, get approved for a house, do all these things I want to do, see what happens. It's like I have to tell myself, I have to plan ahead for the year. I don't have the luxury anymore like I did in my 20s of even though I was making over 60K and I was living a life and I had a boyfriend and an apartment and I was like having friends and events every night. I was like, I really had a life. Even though I had that then, I didn't have what I have now, which is a single life, which is much easier in a lot of ways. It's so much easier for me as a single person to buy a house than in a couple. I'm going to be real with you because I've never dated someone who made as much money than me or more. In, in, a, in a real adult relationship where we considered getting married. And then I've never had anyone I could really rely on in that way more than myself. Like more than myself. So it is much easier for me to adult alone than in a relationship with someone who's not ready to really commit. So I'm just like it's easier. Versus some people I know in my 30s and our 30s, my friends, are waiting till their partner to like buy a house. And I'm like why? And they're like two reasons. One, they need the income while well, I am aiming to not need the income. And two, um, they don't want to make a commitment without somebody else versus I'm the opposite. I don't want to make a commitment with somebody else unless I know that somebody else is like 100% in it like I'm in it. And that's really rare to find. I think you guys might have seen and I've talked about it and I'm here for it. I don't mind what people do with their lives, but it's just like the difference of people there's like there are people who are having like girls who are buying houses with their girlfriends to invest in property. I'm not that human. I don't need my friend's money. I don't need nobody. But that's the thing. I'm also willing to live in the country. I'm willing to live in the middle of nowhere. I'm willing to like be a hermit to have my own independence because I'm so aggressively I just need it so hard. And I'm trying to decide is that what adulting is? I don't know. Like I ask my parents all the time, okay, what happens if one of you dies? And they're like, what do you mean? We'll just go on living. Mom will join probably some religious movement. Like in Catholicism, she'll be like a a lay person who kind of hangs out with nuns. And my dad will just like dive into work and enjoy his work and relax and build planes and do whatever he's going to do. Like my parents have goals. They have hobbies outside of each other. They're totally independent as people. But they choose to cohabitate and love each other and be with each other. And they're each other's best friend. And when they're not doing their, their own hobbies or their own work or whatever, they always hang out with each other or they relax. You know what I mean? So that's like that's a very different relationship than the ones I've been seeing in the world, which are usually relationships that are kind of like falling apart or maybe not falling apart. And people are trying to buy houses or have babies to maintain them. Or maybe it's loosey-goosey. Maybe, maybe we'll be married next year. Maybe we won't. And I just... Woo! the anxiety of that makes me feel like no that makes me feel like I'm in my 20s again and I don't know what the future holds and though we can't predict the literal future I can at least invest in an idea of a future that I would like to be existing in and it's one where I'm very much an adult but I'm an adult that knows how to balance out the fun so like I'm thinking of Joe Rogan and I'm thinking of all these fun people that like are very much adults but they have a lot of hobbies that allow them to be fun and like, you know, activities like going outside and throwing tomahawks at trees or getting high or enjoying anime or, you know, whatever we're doing. <sighs> what does it mean to adults? I have to assume, like much like adolescence, it's just a spectrum of experience. And I think it's all okay. I said in the last podcast that like, Cat Black and Contra and Destiny and me and all of us were just like a bunch of losers on the internet who think are like we matter. And the truth is, is like I still stand by that statement and I still believe it. Like we're just a bunch of we're too adolescent to be truly adults, guys. And at the same time, we are very much adulting in many ways. And that's commendable and amazing. Independent, have our own money, raise our kids, own our homes, participate in society, vote like we're participants in a very adult way. And so I think that's really beautiful. Obviously, adulting has nothing to do with age, just the energy. But I do look forward to the day when I get to adult adult. I actually really look forward to aging. I look forward to not knowing or understanding the youth and just having someone explain it to me. I do look forward to being old. I don't want to be a young old person, but I I don't want to be a completely old person. Like I kind of want to be like Frankie from Grace and Frankie, where Grace is too much of an adult to me, where I'm like, relax and chill, bro. You're too stuck up. I just want something right in the middle where like you're an adult child, you raise kids, you have homes, you're financial... But you maintain a beauty for the world, like a a beautiful interest in the world. Once again, I throw this to my parents. I just feel like they do it really well where they maintain a very responsible attitude about the world, but they really know how to have fun. And I just appreciate that so much. Like there's nothing better than watching SpongeBob with my dad. There's nothing better than watching like a romantic comedy where my mom and I giggle and like 
hate the people we're watching on the movie together. Like there's just nothing better than being silly and petty and basic. And at the same time, even though I love feeling that way, it doesn't move you forward in life. So you have to be ready to be responsible. And I think ultimately responsibility does mean taking care of something outside of yourself. Um, Jordan Peterson talks about this. Everyone talks about this. It's like really popular. Even religious people talk about this. Everybody talk about this. you got to have something bigger than yourself that you believe in. And an ego large enough not to get lost in other people's problems. So that's what I see that normally happens, which I think is really not adulting. I feel like not adulting is when someone else's problems consume you so hard you've lost yourself in them. Because at that point, you're not really in control of your life, which I think is what adulting is to some extent, while acknowledging, and that's just your existing, like who you are as a person. And then there's the reality of existence. So like if a war comes in and you're like reduced, to, that's why, guys, that is why it is so humiliating when people force you to do humiliating things as an adult. Because you feel like a kid again, like you're being bullied by other adults. Um, What was this movie we watched? We watched a movie with my community. What did we watch, guys, where the man was in line and they were like prisoners of war and he's like, I really got to go to the bathroom. And the guy's like, well, go here then. Like, go. And he just like pissed his pants. And I just remember thinking like, this is such a humiliating, disgusting thing to put someone through, like making them urinate themselves in public in the streets because you don't want to give them a bathroom. It's like so gross and very different than because they were in chains and handcuffs. It's not like he had the dignity of going to the corner of the alley and peeing, which is totally fine. I would pee in an alley too. But like being chained up with a bunch of people in line and you piss yourself well in handcuffs. Like there's, it's just like, it's so dehumanizing. And you'll see again, much like everything, the context isn't man outside peeing that's humiliating. That's not humiliating. Plenty of men pee outside in public and don't care. That's not the humiliation. The humiliation is the man asked for the dignity of being uncuffed or even staying cuffed, but being escorted into a private area to pee. And he was denied. He was told to pee in his own clothes in the street, chained up with other people. Do you get what I'm saying? It's the atmosphere in which we experience these things. So it's not like adults can't love anime and not being an adult. But what if you're an adult who loves anime so much, you're willing to forgo your responsibilities with your children so you don't miss the newest episode of Attack on Titan? It's like, okay, bro, do you think maybe the issue isn't the anime? It's you f- like literally ignoring your own children for anime. Same with porn and sex and everything else. Everyone always says money is the root of all evil, but it's your lack of discipline that is the root of all evil. Lack of discipline, lack of focus, and lack of goals is the issue. It is not the things we're all participating in, right? Which is why I'm pro-sex and pro-drugs and pro-porn and whatever. Just like fucking live your life, but be disciplined. Or the things you love will become the things that bring you down and become your downfall. Children can make these mistakes. That's when we learn. As parents, we should teach our kids, I know you love video games, but you can't love video games more than the responsibilities you have, your homework, your school, your health, your relationships. You know what I'm saying? I've got to eat and be an adult. I did not feed myself before this podcast, which is not good adulting, but I just ran out of time between yoga and getting ready and I'm going to go make chicken enchiladas. They're going to be delicious. Have a great freaking day. I think that's all I wanted to say. I think I made my points. I think I hit it home. Anyways, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Stuck in my head and real life while in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine. Yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind. Cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking yeah i'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool then